Hello and welcome. We are in a special conversation with Ashish Bhandari, MD and CEO of Thermax. Uh, Thermax reported numbers that uh, largely on some parameters beat street expectations, while on some others was in line with what the street was expecting. Ashish, good morning. Thank you very much for joining in. Ashish, uh, walk us through your numbers. Revenues and margins were a tad lower than what the street was expecting, but profits have seen a big jump on back of uh, a lower base. You want to walk us through what behind what went behind those earnings this quarter and what lies ahead for the rest of F525? Sure. I would say the numbers have got uh, three sub-themes uh, going on, and I'll cover both the orders and the revenues bit and the profit bit. On the profit side, um, last year we had one uh, single item which was relating to uh, to a lawsuit here where we had taken a 51 crore hit to our numbers, uh, which is why the profits were uh, lower last year. If I correct for that, our profitability margins uh, would show that we were in line and this year has in, wasn't um, that much better. If I take a second parsing of the numbers, this year on the operational front uh, for two parts of our business, both uh, uh, first one being our bio CNG business, which is where we have set up a new line of business to, to deliver bio CNG plants uh, for some customers of ours. We have realized that uh, the engineering that we need to do needs significant changes relative to the commitments uh, and the designs that we had previously worked on. So in that business, we have taken a 45 crore hit for changes that we will have to make over the next couple of quarters on that business. On a separate set of uh, projects uh, where we are executing some really, really large uh, uh, projects, there also for completely different set of reasons, uh, we have had engineering issues where again, we have taken uh, a hit between 20 to 30 crores. So both of these negative, um, negative to some extent surprises have uh, affected our profitability numbers for the quarter, which has masked strength in many, many other parts of our business, including our chemicals and our industrial products business, which continue to go from strength to strength. Even our large boilers business is performing extremely well. That is on the profitability side. Revenues, nothing in particular to, to note. Our backlog continues to get work, work through. I would say there was some slowdown on the revenues because of site-related issues and, and some customer slowdowns, which are more than what I have seen in the last one year. But they are still peripheral. Some of this could have been election-related slowdowns, and, and that will pick up again kind of as we go through this quarter and the next. On the orders front, we were flat relative to last year. My last comment, and then I'll pass it back. On the orders front, we were flat relative to last year. Um, again, kind of some amount of slowdown in February and March, but we are seeing good comeback uh, come in now, and we should post some good orders and good growth overall on the orders front as the rest of the year uh, gets delivered. Ashish, thanks, because you've actually summed up my next couple of questions as well into one answer. But from what I understand, a number of factors that impacted your earnings seems to be a one-off. Do you feel like going into the rest of F525 uh, earnings will be robust and there should be significant growth both on top and bottom line? I think uh, what is significant is a relative number, I guess, but I would expect improvement both on on bottom line, top line, and on orders. Yeah, and I think some of that will start to show from the next quarter itself. So the one big question on the orders front, which we have been speaking about, we have been talking about how we have been delivering orders growth, but the large orders we haven't seen for some time. Um, in April, which is right after, sorry, July, right after the finishing of this quarter, we announced one big 500 crore plus order that we receive. We expect to receive more such orders in the rest of the year as well, which would mean that even on the large orders, which are more kind of drive um, one-offs, but we are in a period of our company where I would expect to see frequent one-offs as well. 
Um, so at least that gives me confidence that even on the orders side, beyond the steady growth that we are seeing in different parts of the business, we'll have good growth on some of these one-offs as well. Right. Also, uh, I mean, there could be an election impact, like you indicated, but does that mean that orders may be lumpy then in nature? So uh, maybe not in this quarter, but Q2 or Q3 could see, uh, you know, front loading of some of these orders. The reason I want to ask you that is because if there are going to be one offs, have you been bidding significantly for some of those large orders? So our bidding activity has gone up. Yeah, our okay. overall pipeline of larger orders has gone up. Um, and see, the have always been very clear in sharing that take a look at our Thermax as the four parts in which we are now reporting our, our numbers in. The two big parts of Thermax, the industrial products, which is, um, which is where we provide product-related solu um, solutions around water, clean air, clean energy across multiple sectors. So this is not dependent on... Uh, the large industries or the large sectors. This sells across the entire breadth of industrial activity in India and, and outside India as well. Here we have been seeing consistent strength and we continue to do well. The portion that slowed down here was the ethanol market and some portion of the Spanjayan market. And like you said, in my view also, that was election related slowdown. That is now getting released and picking up. I do expect a good pickup out here. Yeah, the bigger projects are more from power, steel, refining, petrochemicals, they're those sectors, which are more cyclical also in nature. But there also our bidding activity has now picked up. And let's see what our win rates are. Yeah, we will see that in the rest of the year. Rashi, so for F525, in your opinion and assessment, and of course the orders that you're bidding for, which segment do you think could drive growth in the, in the financial year and over the next two to three years as well? I, I think the Indian story right now is a multi-engine story. And I think we should look at it like that. There is not um, one sector which should, uh, which should be looking to drive. We have broad-based demand, which will mean that across sectors, we should see, um, see investments. And not only that, with the larger demand around how do we get water for industrial solutions, how do we... Uh, the norms across are getting tougher. So, so, and those are happening across sectors. So that is driving one more part of Thermax. The only portion that I think that can be really lumpy, and there is a discussion which is coming very quickly on that, is thermal projects, where the government wants to put in um, 80 megawatts of uh, thermal power plants, again, in a very accelerated fashion. Those projects can be very big and can be very lumpy. And uh, if the government does even half of those, I think that is the one sector which we I'll call out as particularly lumpy, nothing beyond that. Everything outside should be good broad-based growth. 